Well, this is uh, Algebra 2, Lesson 1.6, Factoring Trinomials. And uh, this is designed for the HCS classroom to be an addendum to what we did in class today. So what I'm doing today is giving you some more examples and trying to review the aspects of factoring trinomials. Uh, don't forget, uh, we would have uh, covered this fully in Algebra 1. Algebra 2, we're just trying to brush up and help you to remember what we did back there in Algebra 1. And so here are some further examples to try to help you to understand what's going on. Now remember, because this is a video, you can pause it at any time you please. Take advantage of that. Pause the video, see if you can think of the next step. Restart the video, okay? Take advantage of that. You can also rewind if the need is there, uh, but some basic concepts of factoring trinomials. Number one, don't forget, whenever factoring, look to factor out common factors first. We always abbreviated FOCFF, and you'll see me write that on your papers, uh, on your quizzes, on your tests to try to remind you, hey, always look to factor out common factors first. And again, let me remind you, why do students forget to factor out common factors first? And the reason is there aren't always common factors that have to be factored out. Because there are not always common factors that have to be factored out, students forget it. Let me give you an example. If we had 3x squared minus 6x plus 12, hopefully you look at this and you can see the common 3 that is in all three terms. Remember, you can only factor out something that's common to all the terms at least uh, in its purest form. So I want to factor out that common 3. Remember, we're doing the distributive property in reverse. We're unmultiplying. All right, what's left when you take that common 3 away from the 3x squared and x squared? What's left when you take the common 3 away from a negative 6x? That's a negative 2x, right? Because that negative 6 is a negative 2 times 3, and the 3 comes out. What, it, what happens when you take a negative 3 from a 12, which is a 3 times 4? Then there is the 4 left. Now, if this were a regular problem, you would go on to try to factor that. We're not worried about that right now. I'm just trying to illustrate factoring out common factors first. You must remember to do this. You must, you must, you must, you must, you must. You have to remember to factor out common factors first. And if you don't remember to do so, then what's going to happen is um, a lot of times you're not going to be able to factor what's left or you're going to take up too much time to do so. So please don't forget to factor out common factors first. Very, 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 very important. Number two, what is the method of factoring trinomials. What is the method? And the method is called trial and error. Trial and error. Now, is it important that you know the term trial and error? Not per se, but here's where it's important. It's important that when you get to a trinomial, you say in your brain, oh, I've got to do trial and error. Because then that's going to trigger the methodology of factoring the trinomial. So is there any big deal in knowing the name trial and error? No, there's no big deal. However, you need to associate factoring trinomial with trial and error so that you can use that methodology. All right, trial and error. What is trial and error? As I explained in class today, it's like having a bunch of keys. And so you try different keys until you unlock the door. Really, we should be at the point where we are good enough to um, do all of that mentally and then simply find the correct pairs for factoring. All right, number three. Let's do some simple examples. Simple examples. And remember, use the pause as needed. Take advantage of that. So A, let's suppose we had this x squared minus 5x plus 6 x squared minus 5x plus 6. All right, so looking at this, what do I want to do? I want to factor out common factors first. So I'm going to look at my three terms and see if there are any common factors. There are none, but you know what? I looked. I looked, and there are none. The next step is then to give yourself parentheses for two binomials. So we need parentheses for two binomials. Again, what would go in the front of each binomial? Take the front term. And you have to figure out what times what equals x squared, and the answer is x times x. So an x will go in the front of one of the parentheses, and an x will go in the back of the other parentheses. That's how we figure out what goes in front. 
the front terms must multiply to the front terms. Remember, we're unmultiplying. If you were to multiply these two binomials out, what would you be doing first? X times X to get X squared. Now, the back terms are going to be factors of a positive 6. Factors of a positive 6. Again, for sake of illustration, I'll show you what the possibilities are. For a 6, you can have a 1 times 6, or you can have a 2 times 3. You could also have a negative 1 times a negative 6, or a negative 2 times a negative 3. Now, I'll give you a big, big hint here. Whenever your middle term is negative and your last term is positive, you have to use the negatives. You have to. It's the only way to get a negative in the middle. It's the only way. So really, these choices are out, and that just leaves us negative 1 times negative 6 or negative 2 times negative 3. Now again, what are you thinking in your brain to figure out the correct pair? You're thinking the front one times the last one, right? If you FOIL, it's the outer part, and then next will come the inner part, right, of FOIL. And the check, or to make sure you pick the right pair, is the outers together, and then add to it the inners together, better result in your middle term. That's what you're after. So I already know a negative 1 times a negative 6 gives me a positive 6. I already know a negative 2 times a negative 3 gives me a positive 6. I know that back number is correct. The, the last terms are correct. But i got to pick the right pair so that when I add the outers and the inners, I get the middle term. So if you look at it, again, you're thinking through your mind. And I always do the outers first. And I'm thinking, hey, if I put a negative 3 there, that's going to give me a negative 3x. And if the negative 2 goes in there, it gives me a negative 2x. And you know what? That gives me the negative 5x, doesn't it? And I'm done. I'm rolling on to the next problem. But please make sure, again, oops, let that be red, that your outers plus your inners always adds up to the middle term. That's the key. And you've got to realize that. You've got to know that. Let's try another one. B. B. How about this one? Y squared plus 8y plus 12. y squared plus 8y plus 12. First law of factoring. Factor out common factors first. Are there any? No, but you checked. You checked. You checked. Okay, how do we proceed? Two parentheses for two binomials. Take the front term. It's only one possibility here, right? y times y. That's why I call these simplistic ones. y times y. Okay. That's going to be the first of FOIL. Look at the back. Plus 12, okay. Now I've got quite a bit of possibilities here. Now again, normally I'll do this in my brain, but for illustrative purposes and help those of you that are struggling, remember, to get to a positive 12, you're either going to use 1 times 12 or negative 1 times negative 12, 2 times 6, or negative 2 times negative 6, 3 times 4, or negative 3 times negative 4. And those are the possibilities for 12. Now, again, look at the signs. The middle sign is positive. If you use any of the negative terms, they're double negatives, right? Negative 1, negative 12, negative 2, negative 6, negative 3, negative 4. And therefore, we'll give you a negative middle. They are out. Not going to be using any of those. None of those will work. So again, I'm thinking of a 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. And what do I have to get to? Remember where you're heading. I'm heading toward a positive 8y. That's where you're heading. You've got to know where you're heading or you're not going to get there. So I'm looking for my outers and my inners to equal negative 8y. My outers. Okay, I've got to get to 8. You know what? 2 and 6 gets me to 8, right? So if I get two of them there, right? And then with my inners, get six more y's, doesn't that give me 8y? Sure it does. And that's the factoring, the quantity y plus 6 times the quantity y plus 2. Let's do another one. Let's see. How about this one? 3a squared minus 9ab minus 30b squared. 9 or 3a squared minus 9ab minus 30a squared. All right, what do we want to do first? 
FOCFF, factor out common factors first. I see a common three. So we better get that common three out. And this is the way your work would look. I mean, that you have to do this and you have to show what's left. And then that's what you're going to factor. So what's left? An A squared minus 3AB minus 10B squared. Okay. That step's got to be there because it's that trinomial in blue that you're going to factor now. All right, as a reminder, don't forget about the 3. It's still there out in front as a multiplier. We need two parentheses, right? Okay, front term. A squared, there's only one possibility, right? A times A, good. That's what makes it a simplistic one. Back term. All right, I've got a negative 10 B squared. So that's usually one of the B's in the front, um, in the in the back of the front, and one of the B's in the back of the back. Okay, don't forget them. Students forget them. And again, know where you're going. Where are you heading to a negative three AB? Hey, you know what? A two and a five can get me to a negative ten, and a five minus a two. Or actually, five negatives and two positives gets me to negative three, doesn't it? See, I'm always thinking. I'm thinking about my outers here. And what if this was a negative 5b? That's five negative b's. What's that going to leave for the middle? Plus two positive b's. A negative 5ab and a positive 2ab. Doesn't that leave me a negative 3ab? Yeah, it does. And there's the factorization of that one. So you got to know where you're heading. you got to be thinking. And you're, you're going through these possibilities in your head. Okay? Uh, those of you that are novices, you should be checking. So, again, on the check, you would do A times a negative 5B is a negative 5AB. A 2B times an A is a 2AB. Do they add up to negative 3AB? Yes, they do. Good. I found the correct pair. On I go. I'm rolling along. Okay? So, number four. Number four. Okay, more than one set of front terms. More than one set of front terms. So we're getting now into another category of problems. All right, so something like this. 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. Okay. First law of factoring, factor out common factors first. Are there any? No. Why do students forget to, co to uh, factor out common factors first? Because you don't always have them. That's why students forget the check, 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 check. Okay, we're ready for two parentheses. So watch what happens here. Okay, I've got a 6x squared. Okay, uh, 6x times x is a 6x squared. But you know what? There's more than one possibility. So I'm going to run another set of parentheses. Because also a 6x squared can come from a 3x times a 2x. Now, there really are some other possibilities, but normally an x squared is split up into x times x. I'll say normally. We'll get into a little bit more interesting problems uh, later on in the course. But for now, that's the way they're always going to work. Okay. So remember now, I've got a negative 6 to use. Not only do I have more than one possibility for the front terms, I also have differing values of the front terms in the front and back parentheses. That means the location of my numbers that I use in the back matters. So that, that makes, there, it may, the result is there are more possibilities. So be careful. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Okay. So I'm working with two things that multiply to negative 6. For example, negative 2 and a 3, or a 6 and a negative 1. And again, wherever I place them matters. Always know where you're heading. Where am I heading? I've got to end up with a positive 5x. So watch. I'll write it. but I usually don't write it. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking something like this. If I put a plus 1 here, that's going to give me 6x's, right? But if I could put a plus 1 there, 
then I've got to put a negative 6 there, and is that going to give me a positive 5 in the middle? And the answer is no. So normally I'm thinking through that. I'm not writing it. Okay. All right, so that didn't work. And if I put the 6 there, okay, again, I'm trying to show you what I'm thinking. If I put the 6 there, whether plus or minus, so I'm all the way up to 36. No matter what the other one is, it's only going to be a 1. Is that going to get me to 5? No, that's not going to work. So I don't like a 1 there, and I don't like a 6 there. Um, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go work on the 3x and 2x. Okay, so again, I just start thinking. I'm, again, I'm going to show you what I'm thinking. Normally, I wouldn't write it. If I put a 6 there, I have 18. The 2 would then, therefore, go here, the negative 2, right? And I had 18 minus 4. That's not getting me to 5 either. Again, I'm thinking this. I'm thinking this, right? Normally, not writing it. Just going through the possibilities. Okay, how about if I put a plus 3 here? That's a 9. That would put a negative 2 there. That's a negative 4. Hey, ding, 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 right? That's it. There, there it was, right? Did you catch it? 9 x right for my outers and a negative 4x for my inners and isn't that where I'm heading oh yeah it's exactly where I'm heading so again that one I tried to show you how I would think through it okay that's how I would do the problem and normally that's how it would look and so you choose the correct pair and onward you go let me show you one more of this type B how about this 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. Again, we need two parentheses. And when I look at my front term, I say, oh, I've got more than one possibility. I can use a 4x and an x, or I can use a 2x and a 2x. Okay. All right, well, again, we've got a negative 6 we end up with, so I have to have two things that multiply to negative 6. So all I can use, the, the two things in green have to multiply to negative 6. They have to. I can't use anything else but things that multiply. I can't use a, a positive 1 and a positive 6. That doesn't give you negative 6. I can't use a positive 2 and a positive 3. That doesn't give me negative 6. Okay? So be careful. I've got to use things that will get me to a negative 6. Okay, so again, I'm just going to start cycling through possibilities. All right, 6 times 4 is 24, so I know a 6 there is way too big. Nah. How about a 3 there? 3 times 4 is 12, but then there would be a 2 there, and 12 and 2, and that's 10. Nope, that's not enough. How about if I use a small one in the back? Um, 2 times 4 is 8, but an 8 and a 3 and a 5. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wait a minute, and what do I need the middle to be? Again, remember where you're heading. I need the middle to be positive, so I need the 8 to be positive, right? You see what I just did? Positive 4x times a positive 2 is a positive 8x. And remember, these two have to multiply out to a negative 6, so the negative 3 goes in there, so that my inners, oh, this should be red, so that my inners are a negative 3x, and don't these add up to the positive 5x? Certainly they do, and there I am. I don't even need to go to the 2x and x, because I wrote the correct pair in the front the first time. Factoring by trial and error. All right, let me give you just a couple more examples. Again, I'm trying to give you insight into, into the thinking of these. So number five. Number five. Other examples. Other examples. Just a couple more here as I try to get you to understand the concepts. Okay. How about this one? 3y squared z plus 10yz. 3y squared z plus 10yz minus 8z. 3y squared z plus 10yz minus 8z. Okay, listen. That looks a little complicated, but you know what? First rule of factoring, factor out common factors first. Get that common z out. Now, sometimes there's a common number as well as a common variable. Sometimes there's more than one common variable. Get everything out that's common. 
and make sure you include then what's left because that's what you're going to factor. Okay, what, what would be left here? 3y squared plus 10y minus 8. And it is now that blue trinomial that we're going to factor further, or at least hope to. By the way, just a reminder, will every trinomial factor? No. Does every number factor? Can you factor an 11? No, it's prime. Can you factor a 7? No, it's prime. Can you factor every trinomial? No, not really. Some of them you can't factor. Most of them, because we're trying to train you, are going to factor. Okay, remember, don't forget your common factor. That Z stays out in front. All right, you remembering what to do? How do you start off? Okay, hopefully you said I got to take the front term, and I need two things that multiply to a 3Y squared. Well, that's a 3Y and a Y. Okay. What do your two back terms have to multiply together to get? You got to multiply together to get a negative 8. So you're thinking negative 1, 8, negative 2, 4, 2, negative 4, etc., right? But remember where you're heading. Where am I going? I got to end up at a positive 10y. I got to end up at a positive 10y. I got to end up at a positive 10y. So look, honestly, I would never consider an 8 here. Because, look, 3 times 8 is 24, and I'm, I'm way, I'm never going to get to 10, right? I'm, I'm just wasting my time. It's like the illustration in class today. I gave a student my key ring and said, go open up the closet. And the kid happened to know what school keys looked like, and there were only three of them on the ring, so he tried those three. Now, that saved him a lot of time. And it's the same with here. Look, I'm not going to put an 8 there and get a 24. There's no way it's going to get to a 10. So you got to do things like that. They're going to save you time. All right? 2 and a 4? Oh, wait a minute. What happens if I put a 4 here? I get a 12. And by the way, I need a positive 10y. So I want a positive 12 because then that leaves the negative 2 in here, right? And I end up with a negative 2. See the check? Look, again, I got a positive 12y and a negative 2y. Isn't that a positive 10y? Sure it is. And that's what I was after, isn't it? And there's that one. All right. One more example. Let me give you one more example. And this is B. All right. So how about this? 20x squared plus 20x plus 5. 20x squared plus 20x plus 5. All right. What would you do first? Pause here if you want to think. All right. Hopefully you said factor out the common 5. There's a common 5 to all three terms. Factor it out. If you want to try it yourself, pause it here. All right, here's what you should get then. You would be left with a 4x squared plus a 4x plus a 1. Don't forget the plus 1. That's the common mistake. If you factor out a 5, it's really a 5 divided by a 5, and it's a 1. If you multiply it back out, you've got to get back to that 5. A 1 remains in its place. Okay, so what would you do next? If you want to try yourself, pause it right now. All right, hopefully you said... I now need two parentheses, and I need 4x squared. That can be 4x and x, or, and again, I always want to write my possibilities up. Don't forget your 5, two parentheses, or a 2x and a 2x. Okay, I only have a positive one to work with. That's all I've got. So you might say right away, oh, 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 positive 1. 1 there gives me 4x. Yeah, but that's only part, right? you got to add the outers and the inners. And so, yeah, that's a positive 4x, but what happens when you put the other positive 1 in there? You get one more, and now you got 5, and that doesn't work, does it? So again, this is what I would be thinking. I wouldn't be writing that. I'd be thinking that. I'm looking at the possibilities. I'm always looking at the what are the outers equal? Then the other number goes on the inner. What does that give me on the inner? What's my total? So, you know, hey, a 1. You don't have many possibilities, thankfully. So here, when you put a 1, 
that gives you a positive 2x. And again, when you put a 1 there, that gives you another positive 2x for sure enough where you were heading, that positive 4x, and that's the factorization. Now, one reminder to clean up your answer here. Because a 2x plus 1 times a 2x plus 1 can be written as the quantity 2x plus 1 squared, that's how we want to leave our final answer. So 5 times the quantity 2x plus 1. Factoring trinomials. Look, factor out common factors first. Are they always there? No. Do you always check? I hope so. If you're wise, you will. You're always checking. Then you're going to set up your two binomials. Uh, again, where are you heading? You know, you got to take factors of the first term. It's going to go first. Factors of the back term are going to go last. But remember, when the outers and the inners are multiplied and added up, you better get the middle. Know where you're heading. All right. I hope this lesson helps. You have a great night.